Welcome to Tech Brothers with Damir. In this video, we are going to learn how to rename all default constraints according to the naming convention or standards in SQL Server database. So think about a scenario, you are working as a SQL Server developer and your manager or team, team lead has asked you, can you check if our objects such as a default constraint especially are name following the naming standards what we have in the company so maybe they have a uh, naming convention for the default constraint such as uh, it should always start with a df then they should have schema then they, they should have table name and then uh, there should be a column name and maybe a value for the default constraint what you have used so he would like uh, to take a he is asking uh, to provide the definition and all that and if you can provide it okay fine and uh, then from there if we need to rename so in this scenario I have a, a post written here uh, if you want to take a look like whatever the values are you can uh, go from there let me show you on the tech brothers IT you you are under the SQL Server T SQL tutorial uh, tab and once you are there on chapter 6 uh, you have this uh, information so we have default constraint uh, the very first is how to get the list of all default constraints with the uh, names and all that so click on that one copy this query and uh, this will provide you definition and everything so let's uh, delete okay leave this one as it is and now run the select query and we see that uh, in the tech browser's IT database, uh, these are the schemas, uh, these are the tables, uh, and these are the columns. Uh, and here we have the default constraints created on these columns. Uh, and here we have the values uh, for those uh, default constraints. Uh, now, this information you can provide to your manager and he would understand, okay, none of these, uh, let's say these four of them, the, they are not following the name and standard. Uh, maybe these two are okay because we have you start with df we have schema name table name and column name but these other constraints are not following the name and convention he would like to create a script so you can rename all of them now that's a not difficult part you can always go and use the sp underscore rename a store procedure and you have to provide the old old name and then you have to have the new name what you like so old name and uh, comma new name so this is uh, how the script will be but you need to create maybe you have hundreds of uh, these uh, uh, default constraints uh, which are created by the SQL server nobody provide the correct name while they were creating these default constraints uh, so I have another post for you so you will be going back to the tech brothers IT and uh, under the default constraints uh, you have uh, how to rename all default constraints according to name in standard or name in convention in SQL server open that tab uh, and then uh, copy this query so this query is used in a system uh, objects uh, or system uh, tables or views uh, to generate that uh, query so remember we have uh, the same uh, default constraints is dot columns is dot tables uh, to gather that information um, and uh, if you guys remember I, uh, I can always add a new column here like with a, a static value so if I want to say sp underscore execute or sp underscore rename uh, and then uh, as my query so this uh, static value is going to repeat uh, for each of the row and I can concatenate uh, different columns uh, to this uh, static value to generate my actual query like something like this sp rename old value new value so if I run this one you can see that my my query this is a uh, the static value I have it if I want to add something let's say if I would like to add DB name to it uh, so I can always use a plus sign and then paste it here so this will add uh, the DB name let's give some space here so we'll see they're different uh, you see so this uh, select query I can use to build my SP rename for all those default constraints uh, now this is where I have used that so you see I have select execute SP rename and uh, this is the default uh, or static value I'm putting here as I need to add a single quote I have to add three single quotes uh, to make it one um, so uh, th this is what you will do then you have plus sign concatenation schema name will get the schema ID and convert to the schema name and then we, it will add the dot 
then we will add d dot name that means uh, our default constraint name so it is coming from this uh, system view and uh, this is the alias d is the alias short name if i would have a same columns in different tables or the view and i would not use the alias here let's say if i will remove this uh, what will happen it will give me error say an ambiguous column name because ambiguous or whatever you call so name column does exist in multiple tables but it need to know which name column it need to use so i can take the whole thing here and put it right here and say dot that's one way but uh, that will make uh, our uh, query really lengthy and all that so we don't want to use uh, that part uh, instead of that uh, we will use uh, only the alias uh, so provide the alias here and instead of using the entire uh, table name with the schema here for each of the column that will make your query lengthy and messy so always provide some alias and th use those alias uh, with the column names and tell like okay this is the column i need from this uh, and uh, that means it will come from here all right now we we know that uh, this is the script we need to generate uh, execute sp rename old value and new value so once uh, we run that uh, these are the different uh, views i'm using because all of the columns uh, i need to generate this query does not uh, exist in uh, default constraint and they also does not exist in sys dot columns and sys dot tables uh, so i have to join uh, all these three system views to generate my query and uh, if you see that i'm getting the values uh, d dot name i'm getting the default constraint name uh, from uh, my sys uh, dot default constraint i'm getting t dot name uh, table name from the sys dot tables and i'm getting a c dot name that means uh, i'm getting uh, the column name from uh, sys dot columns uh, to generate this entire query so let's run this query and uh, you see that we have uh, all the uh, rename scripts ready for us so we can copy and go here paste if we feel that uh, this uh, this does not require rename and we can always use the where class here let's say if we would like to say where uh, t dot name not equal to tbl customer we know that remember we were saying uh, here when we run this query and we see that uh, this uh, table has the default constraints uh, but they are already in uh, proper name in uh, convention uh, or they are using the standards what we have defined or what we want uh, so we can always use where clause and uh, ignore those tables uh, if they are already have a uh, um, default constraint in a correct uh, uh, format uh, so now we need uh, only the default constraint uh, scripts for these four uh, uh, default constraint they are not uh, according to our standards uh, so let's take them and paste it here now you see that uh, we are saying execute sp rename store procedure old value so i'm providing uh, the schema here if it is the uh, uh, your all the default constraints are in the db you don't have to provide the schema but there are uh, there could be situations where your uh, uh, default constraints uh, will be in different uh, schemas uh, that means you will have uh, the tables in different schemas uh, so i uh, recommend you know always using uh, uh, the schema name with the object so it would know that in which uh, uh, schema they exist so sp rename uh, once we will provide this tech brother schema and it would know that oh okay this uh, default constraint does exist uh, in a tech brother schema and uh, uh, the last part is that you have to have provide uh, an old value then you have to provide the the one the value you want to rename or the new, new name so once we run this one it should work just fine and uh, it is telling us okay um uh, changing any part of the object name could break scripts and store procedures okay if they, this are used somewhere in the uh, store procedure and all this is just a caution so don't worry about that and now if we go ahead and run this uh, statement uh, give us all the um let me remove this we don't need my query here so now if we will take a look uh, on the default constraints uh, you can see that uh, they are uh, renamed correctly according to the standard we have defined uh, if you would like to add the value to the let's say at the end of that uh, you can do that as well so simply you have to add that part to this 
this query where you are generating this query so uh, you can take uh, remember the values coming from the definition so there is a d dot definition column and if you want to add that uh, you will just have to add uh, at the end uh, d plus uh, d dot definition so it will generate that uh, with it so depending on your naming convention maybe for the default you always uh, instead of a uh, df you will say default constraint def cons maybe this is how your company want to create these uh, uh, default constraints and this is a naming convention they want uh, so you can change a little bit according to the your standards and uh, um, generate the scripts and run them uh, so I recommend uh, testing these uh, scripts in dev environment first, uh, then QA and UAT, and finally into the production you can implement. Uh, and your DBS will run actually these uh, rename scripts for you in uh, uh, upper environments such as QA, UAT, and production. Uh, thanks very much uh, for watching this video, and I will see you guys in next video.